Good morning. I hope you're doing well this morning. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, tuning in. <coughs> I appreciate your patience this morning. We've um, uh, we've had a little bit of uh, uh, sound difficulty, and uh, Brother Brian has worked through that, and I'm grateful for him and grateful for you this morning. Um, I have um, I have missed the sanctuary, so this morning um, we wanted to come uh, uh, in in part of the sanctuary uh, and just uh, spend some time with you. Uh, just want to give you a couple uh, of announcements, if I may, uh, while we were kind of waiting with the with the little bit of delay uh, while we're waiting um, for some others to to kind of log on, and then I'm going to dive right into uh, to the scripture and the text and and to our message this morning. Um, um, our, if you have any prayer concerns uh, throughout our church family, throughout the community, uh, we ask that you simply email those in to us. And, and please know that uh, those uh, requests uh, that are being made known to us on your behalf is being made known to God. And uh, so just email those in at soldierbay at atmc.net. Uh, and... Um, I'm grateful this morning to come behind Brother Don Stanley with an with an awesome uh, Sunday school lesson this morning and uh, uh, during that time of opening the Word of God and and plugging it into heaven and 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 learning about the sanctification uh, process and all what God has done for us uh, and with us through Jesus Christ our Lord and um, again I hope um, I hope this time finds you doing well this morning. If you have a copy of your Bible, I would love for you to uh, to open that up. And uh, if you don't have all your family around, go ahead and grab them and say, y'all come here and uh, just get together uh, during this time. We're not going to be long, but uh, I do have a, a message this morning that's just been laid upon my heart that I wanted to share with you. Uh, it's going to be from a familiar text. Uh, you're probably going when we start, you're going to probably think, well, this is going to be a familiar sermon. But I want to share with you this morning, if you have a copy of God's Word, open it up, please, to Luke chapter 10, the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. And we're going to be looking at or starting at, starting at um, verse 38. So Luke chapter 10, verse 38. And this is the story of, 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 of Mary and Martha and the, and the busyness and, the, and, and all that's going on there and uh and I've titled this time together, Too Busy to be Blessed. Too Busy to be Blessed. Now I want you to listen to this illustration for just a moment. This is something that happened to me on Friday. And this is kind of what got me thinking. Um, on, on Friday evening, um, I was in Lowe's Home Improvement. And I, I went and, and I was purchasing something and I, I was uh, had some questions about it some concerns about it and and we're talking with the manager uh, or one of the assistant managers uh, there needed to be some uh, notes put in the computer about what I was purchasing and, and we were kind of in the back of the store now 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 now, now stay with me we were kind of in the back of the store and he says sir he said if you'll just go on up to the front give them your phone number they're going to pull it up see the comments and and make the adjustments so I, I get on the way to the front of the store where the, where the cashiers and the cash registers are. And when I get up near the registers, I'm, I'm looking around and, and, and I, I see some employees, yes, but I don't see anybody, did you hear me? I don't see anybody at a cash register. There's the self-checkout. And there's the little supervisor there near the self-checkout. And, and I'm, I'm peeping over the batteries trying to find somebody to, to check me out. And without thinking, which I know that's hard for some of y'all to believe, I announce this in, in front of everybody at Lowe's. I said, I need a person. I need a person. And... Uh, and, and the, the supervisor of the self-checkout, she says, well, I can help you over here. I said, okay. So I went over there and gave her my phone number, did my purchase, and I walked out. Now, now stay with me. Too busy to be blessed. Too busy to be blessed. Let's pray together. Father, we pause. 
thanking you for your word this morning. Thank you for this time. Now, God, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that you do this morning, through this time, through this technology, through your text, only what you can do. It is in Christ's name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. When you study the life of Jesus, there are some things that you'll figure out about his ministry. And one thing that, um, that you will almost always find when Jesus went to prayer and he went to, when he went to have prayer, he, he did it in a, in a very uh, uh, unique way and he, and he always almost did it the same way each time. If there's ever a time that we need someone to look at as an example, it is now, and that person to look at is Jesus Christ. Jesus seemed to never get in a hurry when he moved around. There were moments in his life that the scripture tells us that he got alone. And he got away from the busyness. And it would take me near about all day to share all those opportunities uh, that he did that in Scripture. And I want to share with you this morning that COVID-19 chaos that I call it. The COVID-19 chaos, even though it has, uh, even though it has stopped some things in our life, even though it has hindered some things in our life, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, especially with the new executive order that's come down, I believe that starts Monday at 5, the, the shelter in place. If we're not careful with what's been stopped, with what's been hindered, we can still put ourselves in a place of being too busy to be blessed. It has been said that if Satan, listen to this please. It has been said if Satan can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. I'll say that one more time. If Satan can't make you sin, he'll certainly make you busy. In, in, the, front of my, in the front of my Bible, I have a little uh, a place that I just keep some personal notes for me. And, and I've got the, the word busy and I've got it spelled out of, of an acronym. And it's simply, I've got written in front of my Bible, being under Satan's yoke busy being under satan's joke so even though covid 19 has caused a chaos and it's caused some panic and we've some we've stopped some things and some things have been hindered or taken away or has simply been put on pause i just want to encourage you this morning don't let the covid 19 chaos stop your praying don't let the covid 19 chaos stop your praising we still have a God. We still have a God that loves us, that, uh, that we're to worship, and that is still sitting on the throne. And he is always due our praise, even if we're the only one doing it. Don't, let it. don't let it stop you. So even though this is some times that we've stopped some things, I just want to encourage you this morning, maybe, it's some, maybe this is a perfect time in your life to start some things. In this text we see in Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 38, if you'd read it, please, uh, with me. Matter of fact, if you're sitting at home and, and you're sitting there with your Bible, do me a favor. I guarantee you we're going to start in the same place. We're going to stop in the same place. We just, made some, we just may use some different words. But read it out loud. Read it out loud this morning with where you are right now. In Luke 10, verse 38, the Bible says, you'll find words similar to this, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha, watch this, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. Can 
Can you, can you kind of hear him saying that? Can you put your name? Can you put your name right now where Martha's is? Look what he says. Martha. Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Can we spend just a little bit of time looking at this for a second? Now, I told you this is going to be a little unique probably than what you've heard maybe through the years. But it's just what God spoke to me. The historical background of the text that we have to understand to know what was going on there and then to help us now and here. We have to look at that. Jesus and his disciples, stay with me for just a second. Jesus and his disciples had been moving. Jesus had been teaching in Galilee just prior to this. And he returns to Jerusalem to attend the Feast of the Tabernacles. And while he was in this area, he, he actually spoke and taught in Jerusalem during this time. And while he's there, he goes over to the little town of Bethany that sits just on the slope of the Mount of Olives. And he visits his friends there, Mary and Martha. And, and maybe somebody just needs to hear this. This is Lazarus' sisters. Now, when we, when we hang out in this particular text, we're always quick to go to Mary. And, and, and that's a good place to hang out. But I want you to understand that there's only three times in the Gospels that Mary is mentioned, this particular Mary. There's Luke 10, 39, what I just read. Now, I want you to listen to where she is. Can y'all still, can y'all still see me? In case you can't see me, I pray that you continue to hear me. But in this, if you'll allow me, we're trying to get video back up, okay? Okay, I understand. I've been told that video is back up. Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Okay, I've just been told that I could, there I am. Y'all, is my hair okay? Does it look all right? Let's get back to Mary. In the, in the times that Mary's mentioned in the gospel, stay with me. In the times Mary's mentioned in the gospel, she's in Luke 10, 39, and she's at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. In the gospel of John, chapter 11, she's at Jesus' feet, and he's listening to her at the death of her brother. In John, chapter 12, She's at Jesus' feet, anointing his feet with perfume. In all three instances where Mary is mentioned in the text, she is at the feet of Jesus. And one thing that stood out to me, of these three times, of these three places, that she is at the feet of Jesus, there's an aroma. What do you mean, Jason? Well, first of all, in this text, there's an aroma of cooking. In the second instance, in the second instance of the text, uh, Lazarus, there's an aroma of death. And in John 12, there's the aroma of the perfume. Mary and Martha, we often go to this text and compare the two. And it's almost as if we approach this text that at this location of text and the lesson that's behind this text is that when we look at these two, we're to make a choice that we're either going to be a worshiper or we're going to be a worker. And I, I admit there's times we need to be a worshiper and a worker. But I don't want us to look at this text and I don't want us to look at this time that we're in with the COVID-19 chaos as a choice that we have to make. <coughs> but what if this morning 
through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and looking at the text and it coming alive in our life. Instead of making a choice this morning, we, make a combina- we take a combination of both of these and apply it to our life and the life of us as a believer and the life of the church as we know it. It's not about a choice, but it's about a combination. Charles Wesley, in one of his hymns, he wrote this, Faithful to my Lord's commands, I still would choose the better part. Serve with careful Martha's hands and loving Mary's heart. Martha had received Jesus into her home and then rejected him. Listen to this. She received him. She opened her door. She opened her heart and received Jesus in her home. But then she neglected him and kept working in the home. She did, watch this, she did what she did, even though it was appropriate, she did what she did because of a routine. And I want to share with you this morning that Jesus does not want our routines. He wants real time with us. Jesus does not want our ways. Jesus wants our worship this morning. And a major truth that we need to understand during this time is what we do with Christ is more important than what we do for Christ. Did you hear me? Can somebody say amen and let me know it? What we do with Christ is more important than what we do for Christ. Why did I say that? Because we have to be with him in order to know what to do for him. It's not either or. It's both. Mary had her balance. Mary had her balance. Mary had a combination. She knew she could not live by bread alone. Amen. She knew that. Jason, how do you know that? Look at verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me, which puts Mary there with her, has left me to serve alone? Let me share something with you. If you don't hear anything else I say, and if you, if you go off, uh, if you leave the live session right now, I want you to hear this. When all we concentrate on is what we can do for Jesus, I'm going to say it again. If all we concentrate on is what we can do for Jesus, it ends up not being about Jesus at all. If all we're concentrating on is what we can do for Jesus, it ends up not being about Jesus at all. Because look what Martha does. All she was concerned about was the thought process that Mary had left her. And with that happened, she immediately accused Jesus in verse 40, Lord, do you not care? What an accusation to our Lord. And if we're not careful during this time in chaos and panic, will approach the throne instead of in a worshipful mind but in a worryful mind and go to God and accuse him of not caring. How dare us? It'll be all about self and not about the Savior. There's nothing more damaging to the Christian than trying to work for Jesus without having spent any time with him. In John 15, 5, the Bible says, they're red letters. Jesus says, for without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. If we're not careful, and I'm closing, if we're not careful, even during this time where we have stopped some things, we have paused some things, we'll say that some things have been maybe taken from us. If we're not careful, even during this time, we can find ourselves too busy to be blessed. We've been given another chance. We've been given another chance. It's today. We've been given another chance today to make a difference for Jesus and to make a difference with Jesus. Spending time with Jesus. Spending time, listen, I've not even got to the good part. Spending time with Jesus will make a difference. We see it in Martha's life. 
We see it in Mary's life. In the in Gospel of John, chapter 12, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, in verses, in, with verse 1 and 2, will you turn there just a second, if you don't mind? John, chapter 12, where I just read in Luke 10, there was Mary and Martha and Jesus. As we know it, there were three people there. But in John 12, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Then six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. I want you to note something here in the Gospel of John. When there was three people, she complained. And as we read the scripture, we find present at this supper, there's around 15. The disciples are there. Jesus is there. Mary and Martha. Lazarus is seated with Jesus. And there's not been one negative word said by Martha. There was no panic. There was no worry. There was no trouble. Why is that? I think she had found a place. She had found the time to spend it at the feet of Jesus. She had received, listen, I truly believe that she had received peace in her heart by taking her place at the feet. Can I ask you a question? Just me and you talking. How are you doing right now? How are you doing right now with everything that's going on? You remember my story of me at Lowe's? And when I broadcasted, I need a person. I think right now a lot of us need a person. And his name is Jesus. And not only do we need that person. We need, to ha we need a place. To spend it with that person. I just want to encourage you. If we were meeting today in this church. I think this would probably be what we would call. The invitation. And, and this is the time where uh, Aunt Sue and, and Miss Faye would take their place at the instruments. And soft music would begin to play. I would just love to invite you right now. To get with, get with Jesus. Get it, get at his feet right now. Maybe you're, maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you're in your bedroom. I don't know wherever you are right now. Get at his feet. Get at his feet. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe this works better for you. Get your phone. Get your iPod, iPad, whatever. Get, get your earbuds. Get your song. I tell you what. I have been, I have, I have been blessed with some uh, being watching and a part of some beautiful singing. But I have not been blessed with singing. And I tell you what, if I could sing, y'all would be in trouble because I never hush. But I said that to say this. Music is powerful. It's powerful. Will you do me a favor? Maybe after, when, when this live video, when it shuts off, I want you to do me a favor. 
as God spoke to you? Get your earbuds. Go outside. It's a beautiful day. Find your place. Get a place. Find a place. And get there. And just worship. Spend time with Jesus. I promise you I'm closing. But in Scripture we find verses like this about Jesus. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Another scripture says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. In Isaiah 30, Verse 15, you'll find these words. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. Sir, ma'am, I don't know exactly what you're going through right now. But I got some advice for you. I just got a word for you out of love. You cannot go through it without Jesus. Will you spend time with him? Please don't let this find you too busy to be blessed. Sir or ma'am, dude or dudette, boy or girl, maybe you're listening this morning with your parents or grandparents. Can I ask you a question? Maybe you've never been at the feet of Jesus before. And this will be your first time. I invite you to do that. Maybe this morning you realize that you've never ever spent time with him. Today's going to be different. Now you recognize that you're a sinner. In need of a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ. Call upon his name. In faith, believe, the Bible says you will be saved. If you need me, please reach out to me. Call me, contact me. I'll be more than happy to pray with you, to talk to you. Everybody, thank you. God bless you. Please, don't ever, ever be too busy to be blessed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this time this technology, and your text this morning. And God, I just pray that you do in our lives only what you can do. Father God, this morning on my heart and mind is the health care professionals that are literally on the front lines, Lord. God, I pray for each and every one of them. We lift up, we call out their names to you right now, God. Even though we're together, we're apart. But we come to you as one. God, lifting up each and every one that's on our mind. Father, those that are having procedures, those that are having surgeries in the days to come, God, we pray for that that time with that family as they're apart. God, this morning we pray for uh, the, the COVID virus. God, I pray this morning that it'll just leave. That pray right now, God, your hand will just move over this world and all will be okay. But God, even though we don't understand what's going on, there's one thing we do know, that we can stand under the promises of your word. Father, help us this morning. Lead, guide, and direct only what you can do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you.